The songs that I choose to play for you just represent me. Number one, Kenya Muzima, East Africa, Mambo ni hapa. Kila kitu ni tamu tamu, tamu tamu, tamu tamu zaidi. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. By the way, all of my friends on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, all of my relatives out there, all of you that are yet to come, those that still don't know, those I know, and your friends and families and your children, I always have all of you in my prayers every single day. Without God, you can't do a thing. I love Kenya to my heart with all its ups and downs, with all its craziness. I love my country. I'm very patriotic. So I hope you are too. Always stand by your country. That is your root. That is where your grandparents are buried. That's where your ancestors are. I'm an Nilotic woman. A river lake Nilot. And I'm proud of it. I would never ask God to change that. Very proud of who I am. Yeah? And above all, proud of the country that made me. That gave me my roots. I'm proud Luo from Kenya. And I will forever be a Kenyan. East or West, home is the best. And it's right. With all our poverty and our corruption and our whatever, I love my country. I love my country and you'll never ever hear me say that I hate Kenya because I don't and I will never. Whatever they do, what, it doesn't matter. For me, I feel like what happens any day, any time, it's just supposed to be that way. It was just meant to be that way. Because if it was not meant to be that way, it's avoidable. People have accidents on the roads and you find that maybe only one person has been saved, the rest are dead. Because they are meant to. You know, however much you talk and cry and do what? Yeah? Angel Ezra, or the Azra, I don't know whether it's Ezra or Azra, he was given the job of uh, being the angel of death. How he comes is strange, is really scary, it's hateable, it's cursable. But you know what? He does his job and he will do it on all of us one day. So don't spend time hating. When you love, charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. You can't pretend to love somebody else, yet your own people, you don't. Love is free. You don't have to love them to kiss them all around, but just give them that love. The love that you can give unto your people is to pray for them. If they hurt you, pray for them. Avoid them, but pray for them. Then already you're talking to God in secret. He already knows your heart. He already knows what you're doing good for those people. So whether they think you hate them, they think you are bragging, they think you are not, they, they dismiss you or they, 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 they forget about you, but God who you talk to, who is the owner of everything in this world and us too, already knows your heart and knows what you do every day. Don't always try to impress people. Don't always fight so much and work so hard to make people smile. Just do you, be you, talk to God. He knows your heart, he knows you clear. He will do his job. That is how I work. That is how I do my things. You know some people, when you hate somebody, for example, you hate somebody so much and you really pray every day for their downfall, you can't stand them. Maybe you can't stand them loyally. Not only you, but maybe some other thousand people can't stand this person. But when you wake up in the morning, you still find them as happy as they are. You still find them doing the same thing they've been doing or they've been promoted. And you wonder, God, where are you? These are the people who are not supposed to be in this world. Why do you take the lives of the other people and this one you're living? My dear, he's the creator, he's the maker. He knows even your own secrets, the one you're always praying to him and talking to him. And that is how I always say, your prayers don't change God's mind. Your prayers change only you. So don't think that you, you, you go telling people, oh, I have a testimony, I prayed and it worked. Oh. It's you who changed your attitude and maybe your mindset. It's you who changed. The way God wrote his book is the way it's going to be. He already knows even, even if you see now, he might, I don't know whether he postpones stuff, I don't know. But all I know is that he doesn't change his mind. He knows us. He already knows our end. He already knows what, what's ahead tomorrow. He already, he already knows what sin you're going to make tomorrow. So it's only up to you to apologize or not, but it's already there. And that apology, when you do it, it's only your spirit that changes. It's you who feels better after that. And that is how it is. Because God is a spirit. He lives in us. God is not a human being to come and stand there and tell you, hey, now I've, I've rubbed out this, I've deleted, I've pressed delete on that. It's on the trash. Now we're going to empty trash. Click delete or click lotion. It doesn't work like that. Our God is in every one of us, whether it's Allah or it's who. It, that belief is in you inside. So it's that spirit that is in you that changes. The feeling in you, you know, it's about hormones. 
your hormones just change and it triggers, triggers your blood veins and it goes to the brain and things that change. And that is how you live. But your life as the way it was drawn is the way it's going to be. Prayer is about positivity and not to change God's mind. Know that to people. So when you pray bad about somebody, it's you who are going to feel bad when you see that the person is not changing. You cannot change a human being. Oh, oh. Even your own husband, oh, that one I think we all know. Even your own boyfriend, you can't change them. And ladies, this reminds me, be you. If you want to be slim, if you want to work on your body like now me, I'm trying to, to cut down. Do it for yourself. I'm doing it to fit in my nice clothes, to fit in my old jeans, to fit in my nice, my old clothes. You know, that's why I'm doing it. But not to impress, I don't know, my, my boyfriend or my husband or whatever. I don't do that. You know, because him, if, if he realizes he has seen another slim girl somewhere he wants to love, he will love them. Because after all, he knows he has a fat one in the house. So if you try to change yourself and be the slim one that you've seen on his phone, my dear, that slim one is already there. You remain fat the way you are. That is the way he likes you. Maybe he just wanted to test another kind of body. So if you go slimming again and he already has a slim one original and you are now fake slim, what do you want? You're the one who will suffer, not him. You'll not change. Just be you. If you want to do anything, do for you. Not because somebody is trying to tell you to do it. Do for you, for your own health, for your own well-being. I don't control people. Why should I control a human being? It's only children that belongs to all of us. They are the ones who are connected to us. Because me, I was born in another family, he was born in another family. How again are we related? We are not related. We are only related by sex and by kisses and by living in one house maybe. That is our relationship. But my children or his children are his children. That is his blood from his palms and my eggs. So that is relationship. But you now, you want to compete with your child, that your child is loved by your daddy, now there's a competition. That's his child, that is his blood, that is his relation, real relation, created by God on him. You, you're just a passerby. So it's either you work on how you maintain him or you live. So you'll find that most fathers or mothers sometimes, they only really fully feel in your heart you're only connected to your child. The other one is just trying to impress. If you want him to stick with you, my dear, be you. Just be you. If it's too hard, walk out. But sometimes there can come t tests that will force you to walk out, yet you're not supposed to walk out. Maybe they're just temptations. Like the book of Job, hmm? if I'm right. I read the Bible a long time ago. I have my Bibles. They are always there. You know, the reason why I'll encourage you guys also to take your children to Sunday school. What you teach a child when they're young, stick in their minds, even when they don't have time in future to go to church or they, they meet peer pressure. They will always have some words, two or three, some memory verses in their heads. So like me, for example, I have some books in my head, like the book of Job, where I don't know the exact word, but I know that Satan went to, to God and said, there is that servant of yours who wants to show people that he is the best, he is very loyal, he is too loyal, but I want to test him for you because we know him. I know he's pretending. Give me the permission to go and test him, God, to see if he's really as loyal as he, as he thinks. Then God said, okay, if you insist, go, but just don't to kill him. That's all. I'm watching from above. And God, Jesus, I mean, uh, Satan went and tried this man, and tried this man, and tried this man. Killed all, all his livestock. Killed, killed all his children. Everything that he had. Job remained firm because he believed in God, his creator. Anyway, he was created alone. All the other things were given to him by God. So if God wants to take them away, he will just cry and tell God, okay, if you mean to take away, you're the one who gave me take. But so long as I'm pure in my heart and you won't punish me that I did as I made a sin, I will remain pure because you created me alone. The rest are just gifts. And they suck. Job just sat there and cried as the children died, cried as that did. At the end of the day, who won? Was it not Job? So even you, stand your tests. Some, God will definitely give you a sign and tell you, my dear, this one is not a test from me. This is real. This is real. Huh? Don't pretend to be job, my dear. This is not job one. Go away and you stick to that relationship and then beat you, beat you until they kill you. But there are some, if you listen to God, when you're praying, listen. You'll hear this verse that is insisting in you. This one, however much I pray, this one, this one is not working. This one is just not true. You know, when you feel like you're forcing God to do something, but you know very well God is not for it, then move away. But when you pray and you even want to give up, but you feel like something is telling you inside, where chilanga bwana? What are you seeing? Stop looking at that phone. Yeah, eh? stop this. Stop drinking this kind of a drink, man. Live Fanta, and you love Fanta. And this thing telling you, live Fanta, and you'll be okay. You don't want. I'm addicted to Fanta. Then now that is when you suffer. Brown chocolates. Finished business.